going on, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, join us on the podcast today. Make sure if you're first time, hit the subscribe button. Um, if you have not subscribed to our podcast uh, YouTube channel, and those of you listening to us on Spotify or the various um, platforms, thank you for joining us on our podcast. Make sure you you know follow us and subscribe uh, to our podcast. So we want to talk today about a brother that took his life. His name is Clyde Kerr. The third. Now, he was a 43 year old Lafayette Parish Sheriff's deputy. And this brother left a message, you know, on social media about police brutality and the difficulty of reconciling his identity as a black man within his profession before he took his life February the 1st outside the sheriff's office. Now, I wanted to play a audio of what the brother is going to be talking about, and we'll come back and follow behind it. I don't know, possibly, maybe if y'all want to, you should. Um, like I'm saying, take a knee, but you need to figure something out because this, this is a moment that can be seized. I think that it should be, so. But, um, yeah, man, um, I've had enough of all of this nonsense of, of serving a system that does not give a damn about me or people like me. Or, um, I mean, just for my life in general. And uh, this is my statement. If, if this isn't something to state that uh, this killing that's going on, especially by the police, which I am, I can't abide by this no more. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having anything to do with this nonsense anymore. Um, call me what you want. Try to discredit me. I have been a stellar, stellar deputy in this five plus years that I've been there. My last email has been uh, sent, it's copied to somebody. I can't be described. Never so much as a, one write up for maybe some reports being late. None whatsoever. So it's not, it can't be said that. Uh, you know, I was um, a shammer or anything like that, or I, I wasn't pulling my weight. And um, just for contextual purposes, I just want y'all to understand where and what I'm coming from. It's my entire life has been in, 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 in service of other people. And it's just dawned on me that this time, as of now, needs to be seized because you don't really give a damn about us. That is the truth. That is the truth. I've served with a full heart in the military. After that, got back into law enforcement, and you have no idea how hard it is to put a uniform on in this day and age with everything that's going on. None. And, uh, listen, y'all entrust me to safeguard your little ones, your small ones, your thing that's most precious to y'all, and I did that well. Y'all trust me with that. I've had security clearance in the military. That's verifiable. If I was untrustworthy, if I was a threat, would they let me guard the U.S. Embassy in Kabul? Which I did. I trained Iraqi police, Afghan, Af Afghan National Police, and that's not it, but I wouldn't have been put in a position of that if they thought I was a threat. But that has allowed me to see the inner working of things, and this is a demonic system, and it's not anything I can continue to serve and want to be a part of. And this is a, this is, this is, this is not right. This is not, this is no form of justice. Let's go down on this. Both of them, shot in his own apart. How that work? How does that work? Chilling on his couch. I don't give a damn if he had weed in the apartment. You're going to execute somebody for that? Oh, no, y'all are good for that. You, you, you break up families for a plant, this war on drugs and this nonsense. But, oh, now it's starting to get legal because big pharmaceutical companies stand to make billions off of it, and they paid off the lobbyists, who in turn have started ushering the way it needs to go for them. The countless people who are doing time behind that. How do you, how do you, how do you even make amends for that? You can't. You can't. 
This Floyd Man Brianna This shit is not right I'm telling you that I it it, it it if this feels right to you as a person there's something is wrong with you This is the furthest thing from right This is the manner of wickedness that I bro and you're getting away with it. When is enough going to be enough for people? Huh? Seriously. Seriously. Y'all are radicalizing people, and then when you, they buck and they want to go against the system because it's not for them, you come down on them with a hammer. I, I, I can't. I don't, I don't understand this. I do not understand this. It's getting to the point now, I... Let me tell y'all something. Again, I'm going to go back into it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be wrapping up pretty soon. None of this is happenstance. Do you understand me? None of this is happenstance at all. If you think it's possible that all of this is happenstance with everything that's happened in this immediate area, no. Pellerin? I don't know all the inner workings of that, but between that and just, man, I, Listen, I understand we have a tough job, but we signed up for this. We need help. Help. Because it is, we deal with the bottom rung of society. It does not give us an excuse to just do whatever we want, and that's what we're doing, and we're not being held accountable. And it's, it's just allowed. Some people was criticizing this brother when they heard this story. They were saying, oh, well... You know, this brother, you know, he 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 weak. He shouldn't have did that. But let me tell y'all something. Those of you saying somebody is weak, this man, you know, served in the military, seen a lot of things there. Then he, you know, went to the sheriff's uh, department. And Louisiana is definitely one of those conclaves of white supremacists, okay? Oh, it really is. Um, great people in Louisiana, best food in the country. Louisiana, hands down, okay? My family's from Louisiana. My, my lineage is my family was on sugar, claim, sugar cane plantations in Louisiana. So I definitely have ties there. But what you heard that brother say, and they even admit now that racism is a health crisis as well. Um, some people just cannot keep dealing with racism, white supremacy all freaking day. Some people know how to cope with it, but you know, some people just can't. And, and listen, this is to me a great lesson in we need to, as black people, learn how to remove ourselves from the situation at times. When I told you the times that I went to the African continent, I felt like a, just a big weight off of my shoulders. When you in this wicked Babylon nation, that everything evil is good and everything good is evil. It can weigh you down on top of the, the hatred that you receive coming at you from all angles. Then in his profession, hatred gonna come at you because of what that entity represents. There's no police department anywhere in the world people like because that entity was instituted during chattel slavery. The, the origin of, of police departments was just straight evil. It was nothing good about that whatsoever. And this brother saw all the police brutality incidents. He heard about them. You think he would like to do something about it, but he said that that whole system is just wicked. He said it. I'll talk to other people who've been police officers and just say, you know, they had to get out of it. He said, you can't change it from the inside. A lot of brothers say or sisters say, I'm going to get into this system and change it from the inside. And they couldn't. They realized they say it's that ingrained. You can't change that system until you break it completely down. And you have to build it right back up. That's the only way it could be done. And these people, these wicked people in this Babylon system do not want that evil entity broken down and rebuilt back up where it could be righteous and be a, a place of, of equal justice for everybody. They don't want that. They want to keep that a conclave of white supremacy. They want race soldiers. 
And if you're black, you need to be a race soldier, too. You need to overlook the brutality. You need to overlook the the, the neo-Nazis that's in there and all kind of other clan and everything, you know, proud boys. You need to overlook all of that if you're going to be on the race soldier department. I don't say that brother is weak. I just believe that brother should have took a vacation, should have got out this country. And, and listen, if it's nothing wrong with you saying I didn't had enough of this wicked nation, I got to get out of here. It's nothing wrong with that. Some people can't can't deal with that mess. This man um, was 43 years old. He's seen enough. He was a he was in in, in, in um, veteran. So he so he you know was in the military, and then he, all the stuff with that. Like I said, some people just can't deal with it. Especially you don't know what happened to him when he was in in the military. You don't know. On compiled on top of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and all different things that he see. That's going on in society. There's a lot of black folks that that every day, some of them are walking around depressed. They can't get out of depression due to this wicked system that we live in. You have to be a strong person to live in this wicked system as a black person. It's not easy. And this is what what, what causes us to be sick or some of us to age faster than what we should. Some of y'all, you know, drink uh, your Hennessy and your weed on the weekend sometime to escape what you deal with. But Hennessy and weed is not going to escape it for you. Some of you use harder drugs at times. It's not normal to be dealing with this crap every day, all day. Every day is a battle. I mean, if you live in, in this wicked nation, every day is a battle for you. It's not nothing that you're not going to do daily. If you're not, if you just sitting in your home and watching TV, you're dealing with a battle because they're going to have some propaganda come your way some way, form or fashion, even in your home where you're not out there dealing with nobody. You go in the workforce, you got to battle that. You go um, just to the grocery store, wherever you got to deal with, you know, their racism at times. Places like that. You go to school, college, whatever you're going to deal with. Every area you're going to deal with it unless you have some sort of ownership. And even if you have ownership, if you still live in this system, you may endure some sort of racism or whatever, right? You may. What we need to do as black folks, and I've said this before, get you a, your passport. 70% of Americans don't have a passport. I'm telling all black folks, get you a passport. And when things start opening back up, start traveling internationally. Start traveling. You shouldn't sit up here and, 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 and feel like you got to do that to yourself because it's just too much for you. You understand? Now, the brother did suggest that there should be more civilian oversight and standardized training implemented to improve the way communities are policed. They don't want to do that. They don't want no civilian oversight. The only time they may halfway do something is when people start tearing the city up like when, they, like when George Floyd. That's the only time they listen to you, unfortunately. Now, he said that, you know, he talked about how the exposure to violence it has negatively impacted them. He talked about, you know, the trauma working. He said the night Lafayette Police Corporal Michael Middlebrook was killed and stressed the need for members of law enforcement to have greater access to mental health resources. OK, in which this brother needed that at the same time. Um, now this is what I will say, and I'm, I'm going to keep saying this over and over and over and over and over. It is not healthy brothers and sisters. It is not healthy for you to endure what you're enduring without a break. Some of you don't even take a vacation. Not even in the United States, you haven't found your happy place. Even here, let's say you, you may not go, go to the continent right now or the Caribbean, whatever. If anything, you can go to the Caribbean, right? Find somewhere for you to go. Please take a mental health break. Mental health breaks are important, brothers and sisters. Take, you know, sometimes you need it with your wife, you know, your your uh, uh, your husband, uh, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Take a mental health break. So to go as a family. Sometimes your kids need a break too. Because trust me, your kids are enduring every day. They'll save your money. Take them. Take them somewhere. Wherever you think it could be fun. You know, fly somewhere, drive somewhere, whatever you guys want to do. Just just get away from your area. I'm telling you, even the times that me and my wife just went 
different places just for a few days. It, you know, your mindset just changed a little bit, right? It's just just a little bit. You enjoy, like I said, prior to COVID, oh, Lord, you know, prior to COVID, you know, we would go different places and visit different areas and, and, and you know, go eat different food and, and see different people. Sometimes that could be good for you, right? Please, for, for the sake of your mental health, for the sake of your relationship, your, your, your family with your children, take breaks. Take them. You know, because in the black community, we don't promote taking breaks, mental health breaks. We don't promote you know, escaping because listen, there's nothing wrong with escaping from anything. Sometimes you need to escape from something, build yourself back up. Then you can go back into the battlefield with white supremacy. It, 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 look, you look at any sports, any whatever, any fighter, even on the battlefield in war. If a soldier is too tired to go on, then that soldier need to be replaced for somebody that's fresh so they can continue. You know, even soldiers have to sleep in war. Soldiers can't go 24 seven. Well, even if soldiers have to sleep and they have their, you know, they, their uh, platoons and shifts and things like that. Right. You need to be the same way because it's a battlefield for you here. Take your breaks, you know, take your family, take your children, enjoy your life. We don't want you to be so in despair so you feel like you got to take your own life. And now this is this is not always a, a definite with brothers or sisters in this country. We as black people rank the lowest in suicide. We do. But one brother is too many. One brother is too many. So what I will say is make sure you pay attention to your mental health. It is not a taboo subject to be talking about. And sometimes, like I said, you know, sometimes you could talk to somebody, you know, or, like I said, my best thing is just taking a vacation, taking a break. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because, um, you know, I'm ready for COVID. Listen, a lot of you think that I'm not tired of COVID. You think I'm not tired of these restrictions. You think I'm not tired of hearing about you got to take a COVID test to go over here. You got to take a COVID test for that. All the, the, the vaccine and all the different things. I am so sick of that. I'm sick of that just as much as you are. I am. I'm ready. I'm ready for my little girl to be back in school like normal and all the different things that we need to go, you know, want to go back to normal. I want to. It is too long. It is too much. I get it. Some of y'all been locked down, like at least in Texas. You know, we ain't been really locked down like that. We haven't. You know, we can't go to the restaurants. We can go do this. We can go do that. Now, y'all in California, man, my God, I felt for y'all. They had y'all locked down like y'all was on house arrest. That's why everybody was flocking to Florida. Because Florida wasn't locking people down like that. But what I'm saying is, is, you know, racism is very serious, folks. Racism is stressful. White supremacy is, like I say, when I tell you it's a doctrine of demons, it's exactly what it is. Don't let it get the best of you where you feel like you need to, you know, take yourself out of here. You got more to live. You got more to see. You got more to contribute. Take your break. For me, my happy place is the continent of Africa. That's my happy place. And, and I'm making sure to lay things out where I could be there a whole lot more and in Babylon a whole lot less. And while, while we waiting to get back to that time, we could be on the continent a lot more and in Babylon a lot less. You know, I'm going to prepare, prepare, prepare and prepare some more so we can make sure to make that happen. Because this place is wicked. And, 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 you know, I feel bad for my brother. I feel bad for him. You know, I hate to hear that, but we, we got to look at this, this situation. We got to live. We got to learn uh, every story that we are podcast where we present is a learning opportunity. It's a learning opportunity. So we need to learn from what happened to our brother and make sure we can, you know, don't let that happen to us.